What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final episode of the 2018 Tuna's Edge Drag Battle coverage. Now, we've already seen who's got the quickest time in each category. Now, we're going to see who can make those numbers count in a heads-up drag race. First up, we've got the Platinum Racing Products four-wheel drive drag battle shootout, and then we've got the GCG Turbochargers two-wheel drive drag battle shootout. The winner of each will then go head-to-head -head with the top GTR to see who is our outright winner at the 2018 Tuna's Edge drag battle. Let's go. Our first pairing in the Platinum Racing Products all-wheel drive shootout. Luke Beach's STI South Territory. They both cut clean greens. Luke bogs down a little bit. Does his WRX have the power to try and get the top end charge against the territory? He's starting to gain in the top end. Can he make it there before the finish line? He can't. Staff takes the win. Big upset against Luke Beach's STI. Let's have a look at the replay with the onboard. The guys at the other end said that's the upset of the day. It was 0.1 of a second. How did it look from the driver's seat? Yeah, it was good. Awesome. Now it is the quickest Evo at the event up against the quickest mouth at the event. Marlon gets the jump with a great reaction time. It seems to have some wheel spin and bogs down a little bit. The Evo is able to walk around him in the top end. Jimmy takes the win with another nine second pass. They've both got the mile an hour, but Marlon is simply unable to use it. Let's take a look at the replay. Another nine second pass, it was a 9-9 and you beat the man that everyone wants to beat, Marlon, how was it? Yeah, awesome, mate. He took off before me, but we, we, we caught him, so we'll spin off the mark, but we got it, so it was awesome. Finals time now for the Platinum Racing Products all-wheel drive shootout. Jimmy Assad in the Evo, up against Staff in the territory. He gets the jump on a great green. He's got a couple of car lengths on him at the 60, so now Jimmy has to do all the work in the top end. Can he drive around him up top? Yes, he can. 149 mile an hour versus 138 mile an hour is what did it. Let's jump on board in the territory to see how it looked from the driver's seat. Car, you're actually the four-wheel drive drag battle champion now. It was actually yeah. a pretty close run. <laughs> yeah, it was, man. He got me at the start, but we caught him, man. No problem. First up, last year's quickest six-cylinder two-wheel drive, Tony Flash, up against this year's quickest. Flash gets the jump, but just goes up in smoke. Musti was having wheel spin as well, but used that to his advantage and went around Flash, and Flash just cannot put the power down. Musti takes the win with a 12.17 and a lazy 113. Let's have a look at the replay. had a few issues with uh, um, the alternator previously. Um, the car was cutting and it was turning on and off and doing all sorts of issues, but uh, we managed to get it down. Hopefully um, turn it up a bit. Um, wasn't running with full boost right then, um, and we'll see how it goes. Two very competitive drag races at the strip. John has run sevens, Jay has run eights, but what happens here at the airport, you can see that Jay just has the grip advantage especially in the middle part of the track where he can just put all the power down. He takes the win with a 10-6 at 139. John backs out of it early. Let's take a look at the replay. Oh, I was just a bit nervous to see how the car would act because we just done a few things to it, but I liked it. So I was going to leave the chin as it is and just yeah, hope for the best. 2J versus Barra now. Akram's S14 Sylvia has done some impressive times throughout the weekend. Massimo gets the jump on him though, but can he put that power down? 
You can see he's been struggling all weekend with traction. And he is again this weekend. Can Akram do the top end charger? It's going to be close at the finish line. Pow, look at that. They are neck and neck on the finish line. But the timing beams don't lie. And Akram just gets the win. Let's take a look at the replay now so you can see just how close that run was. It was pretty close, man. Like, I, I thought he had me, and then I just, you know, I, I whacked it into a bit of higher boost, and then I just started wheeling him in. You know, it was real good. Guess how close it was? How close? Two thousandths of a second. Yeah. <laughs> go, the two Js, go! Two monsters with over a thousand horsepower. Mitch Smith in the Commodore Ute gets a great green light. Ender's still sitting there, probably trying to get up against the trans brake VL style. Mitch gets some wheel spin, but it doesn't matter. He has a clean run to the finish line, gets the win with an easy 11-2, 138. Uh, got a bit looser the gear change, but got off the line pretty well. So yeah, still won, it was good. Perfect, what's the plan for the next round? Uh, take a little bit out of it at the gear change. Jason D'Ambra, a veteran of Cootamundra in the Commodore up against Dale in the S13. Both get a good green light, good reaction time. Jason seems to have more grip and he's out of there. He's got the lead by half track, can he keep it? The S13's got plenty of power, but not able to catch back up in the top end. Jason takes the win, 11 094 at 120. Let's take a look at the replay. seat yeah the run was good it's done better before but uh done good enough obviously <laughs> event naming rights sponsor arthur from tuna's edge in the 323 wagon it's a wild little machine he gets a great reaction time adrian bogs down a little bit but gets going but arthur is up in tire smoke it's a wild run from that little 323 but adrian's mr2 with the k series honda engine has the power Heat going up top. He's out of it early, but gets the win with a 10-8. Let's have a look at the replay, and you can see just how wild this run is. Turn the power up a bit, turned it up a bit too much because these cars are a bit quicker. Should have probably turned it down. I reckon I would have probably had a chance, to be honest. But it's all good fun, man, at this event. We love it. Every year we'll be back, hopefully next year with our GDR. Yeah, awesome, man. Felt good. Car's doing well. Um, yeah, came for the next one. Into round two now. Musti has the quicker time of the two cars, but Mitch has been more consistent. Let's see what happens. Mitch gets the better reaction time. He's got a couple of car lengths on the Supra. Has it got the power in the top end to catch back? It doesn't. You can see Mitch winds more power and as he gets down the track and he's able to simply pull away in the top end, gets the win. An 11 1 5 at 144 miles per hour. Let's jump on board to see what it looks like from the passenger seat. Yeah, turn it down a little bit around the gear change and it worked heaps better that time, so see how we went. Jay Sedek may be young, but he's already an experienced drag race and you can see it here, gets a great reaction time on the tree and already has five car lengths on Akron before they'd even got the race started. And Jay Sedek will get an easy win in that pack performance built and tuned RX4. Backs off early to conserve the car, still runs a 10.8 at only 104.
Yeah, it was pretty good. I was a bit far ahead, so I just thought to myself, just back off it. Jason's going to need luck on his side if he wants to get the win here up against Adrian Pasman's MR2. He's been bogging down a lot on the start. Gets a good green, but it bogs down a little bit. It's back on boost quickly, so he's out in front. He's got the mile an hour to stay there. And you can see in the top end, the MR2 with the K-Series Honda engine has the power to stay out in front. 10.8 at 140 against Jason's 134 mile an hour. from never being a drag battle to coming here, getting a record, and now you're smashing people in the drag battle show. <laughs> That's it, man. Super excited. Awesome event, eh? I'm just loving this. It's so much fun, mate. The car hooks up. It's it's actually a bullet, mate. It's, it's great fun. Love it. Into the semi-finals now, Jay Sedek up against Mitch Smith. Jay has been perfect on the tree every run, but Mitch Smith has a great reaction time as well. But the RX4 simply has superior traction over the first half of the track. He's able to put it all down, get himself a nice big lead, which he can hold on to to the very end. Mitch probably would have caught him with another couple of hundred metres with the extra power, but a 10-3 from Jay Sedek to get the win. Let's jump on board with Mitch Smith to see what it looks like. Guess what? 10, 3, 6, 8. Wow. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. No, I felt good. Um, it was spinning just a touch, but he's got the feather and yeah, got down there. It's a bit windy as you get into the end. But, um, you know, other than that, track's pretty good. Finals time, bro. How are you feeling? You made the finals your first time at Drag Battle. Yeah, honestly, I didn't even expect it, eh? It's going to be a showed out, yeah. Um, it's going to have fun, I guess. See how we go. Master and apprentice customer up against workshop owner Benny Tran from BYP up against Adrian Pasman. They both get clean greens, good reaction, take off together. So now it's going to be about who has the most horsepower. And based on the leaderboard, it is Adrian's MR2 that has more grunt and able to do a top end charge 10 6 at 140 mile an hour to take the win. versus apprentice or something you're taking out the BYP and you're into the final yeah mate pretty excited keen to get into it G does <laughs> now you've got a rotor to go up against next he's gone 10-3 you've gone 9-8 so in theory you've got yep. the advantage what do you think is going to happen look I think it's going to come down to the start to be honest it's all in the 60 foot so um, I've bogged the last two um, so I just need to get those revs up hold them there and uh, try and slingshot out of the start finals time now Adrian's MR2 is the quicker car but hasn't been as consistent as Jay Sedek with his times, he's just been chipping away every run and gets perfect greens just like that one. Adrian's car bogs down a little again like he has in previous runs. And Jay Sedek uses that to his advantage, puts all the power down in the first part of the track. And he has enough power to hold off the MR2 up top, takes the win, goes through even quicker, 10.22 at 140 miles per hour. Gets the job done. Let's jump on board with the MR2 to see what it looks like. Sweet, oh, wow, no, seriously, yeah, man. what a feeling, man. Uh, now nah, the car feel good, just sent it all the way. So now tell all the other rotary owners how much fun is the event. Honestly, he's a missing out. 
the best, the best event. I love it. Okay, now you're going to go take on some all-wheel drive cars in the final shootout. We already know what the statistics say, but are you still going to give it a shot? I'll race anything. I don't care. It's all for fun. The outright winner was supposed to be determined by a Chicago shootout between the four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive and GTR winners. But an issue with the B2R Motorsport GTR meant Josh was out. And an all down at the end of the day meant that only one lane could be used as it couldn't be cleaned up in time, so plans had to change. Jimmy and Jay would be given one run each and the quickest time would determine this year's outright winner. <laughs> Well, there you have it. The 2018 Tuner's Edge Drag Battle is run and done. Nearly every single category had the record broken and a rotary finally showed what could be done at Cootamundra with Jay setting the record for quickest rotary and taking out the Drag Battle Shootout. Now, we've already started planning for the 2019 Tuner's Edge Drag Battle, which will be the 10th anniversary, along with the GTR Challenge. We're going to have the dates and details on our website in a few weeks' time, so keep your eyes peeled. But in the meantime, head to our website to grab Drag Battle and GTR Challenge merchandise, along with Motive merchandise, and now Hoonigan merchandise as well, as we're the official Australian distributor. So keep your eyes peeled, and we will see you next year for Drag Battle and GTR Challenge. Just push it on your oh, chin. Man. Right there. <laughs> Hi, Dallas. Hey. Not a power skate competition. <laughs> nah, that's all I can do. Should have probably turned that down. I reckon I would have probably had a chance, to be honest. That didn't work. It's for your dad telling me just run one drag battle. Uh, one more than him. Huh? Yeah, one more than him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you changing your boots? Yeah, every gear. Even up. <laughs> That's the way we drive, bro. It's a taxi, right? That's correct, bro. Any more passengers? <laughs> Ten bucks a lift. Ten bucks a lift. Oh, I'm a fully hectic. <laughs> I came here because you asked me to, bro. <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> so if you hold that on. <laughs> get down on one knee, bro. Get down on one knee, mate. Get down on one knee. Still got the, you still got the, the best beard. The best beard? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you find, mate? You been exploring? I was okay. just um, I was seeing whether I had a billet block or a cast, and there's bits of it. 